Hi, thanks for joining us today. In the next 30 minutes, we will discuss how ONA plays an important role in designing and building modern network services made of cloud native network functions. I'm joined by a panel of industry experts who are leading the evolution of the ONA project to the cloud native network era. They will tell us how ONAP is transforming into this new paradigm and how you can leverage it today for your network services. Before we kick off the panel, let's start with a brief reminder of what ONAP is and the highlights of its cloud native transformation. Catherine, can you please remind us what ONAP is? Thank you, Rani. So the Open Network Automation Platform, codename ONAP, is a comprehensive open source platform for orchestration, management, and automation of network and network computing services. This platform can be consumed by network operators, cloud providers, and enterprises. So founded in 2017 under the Linux Foundation umbrella, eight major successful releases have been delivered so far. The ONAP committee is currently working on Istanbul, the ninth release expected by quarter four this year. So real-time policy-driven orchestration and automation of physical, virtual, and containerized network functions, ONAP enable rapid automation of new services and complete life cycle management, critical for 5G and next generation of networks. Today, ONAP is successfully established as the de facto industry standard for NFB SDN automation, key stakeholder to accelerate 5G deployment, run enterprise vertical market virtualization, ONAP is now on the right path for its cloud native journey. Back to you, Rami. Thanks, Catherine. So, uh, Bion, could you highlight the journey that ONAP is going through to orchestrate cloud native services? Sure. <clears throat> this is about the ONAP CNF orchestration journey. ONAP support hybrid services covering VNF, PNF, and CNF by leveraging open source and standards. It is able to support both the greenfield and brownfield environment. For example, CNF on bare metal, CNF on VM, VNF on VM, and PNF. As an end-to-end -end orchestration platform, ONAP support day zero onboarding deployment, day one instantiation configuration, and day two configuration plus and upgrade. So it's not just for infrastructure orchestration, but also application configuration and upgrade. For CNF and 5G, ONAP aligns with industry standard, such as Etsy, 3GPP, and others, not only conforming to existing specifications, ONAP working with other open source community, for example, ORIN, and develops and leads new specification for facilitating CNF orchestration handling and enabling effective orchestration. The application service descriptor project is a showcase for the effort by simplifying CNF modeling, packaging, and lifecycle management. By leveraging available ONAP capability, the vendors and operator don't need to start from scratch for their model and package management and orchestration of the CNF and 5G. ONEP provides the common infrastructures for CNF, VNF, PNF network service model and package onboarding, design and distribution, and support both SEO line and cloud native orchestration. ONEP is also a 5G network slicing management platform, which conforms to 3GPP standards. So it can work with other open source 5G slicing controllers which conform to 3GPP with some integration effort. Briefly looking at the diagram, ONF support onboarding of Etsy, Soul 001, CNF, VNF, PNF network service models. It support Etsy, Soul 004 for VNF, CNF packaging, and Etsy, Soul 007 for network service packaging. And it will support the application service descriptor for CNF in the new future. ONIP designs services based on the onboarded models and distribute resource artifacts to the target repositories for runtime component operations. Lastly, 
ONET orchestrate CNF and other network resources by interfacing with the platform infrastructure container as a service, such as Kubernetes, Beam, and NFEI. This is a journey. Back to you, Ronnie. Thanks, Mio. Uh, Sesho, could you say a few words about how ONAP is already being used to orchestrate cloud native network services? Uh, hi, guys. Uh, thanks, Ronnie, for giving me this opportunity to talk about this. So, ONAP, uh, actually, to start with, the OPS 5G is a project started by DARPA. DARPA is the Defense um, Re Advanced Research Agency of uh, uh, Department of Defense of USA. Uh, so the main purpose of this OPS 5G was to actually provide an open, programmable, and uh, secure 5G. Uh, as the name suggests, we are um, uh, intended to actually have a, a 5G secure 5G based uh, networking or, or platform, which can be both open and programmable. So the collaboration is happening right now with respect to LFN and ONAP is gonna play a key role in that. So the, as we can see from diagram here, uh, most of the projects from LFN are participating in this and ONAP has a very key role to play. So the, the project which is being done uh, uh, in the LFN is called the 5G Blueprint, or 5G Blue, Super Blueprint. And it's based on the OPS 5G. It actually demonstrates how a real-life end-to-end services can be orchestrated using mature open-source-based technologies. So when we talk about open-source projects here, we are talking about uh, not just one but multiple projects, uh, how they are interacting with each other, doing specific jobs. And uh, the overall picture um, is to actually have end-to-end -end secure um, 5G, which is most both programmable and open. Uh, and, and coming back to ONAP role in this, ONAP will be doing uh, not just uh, the uh, initial part, it actually, as, as Jim just said uh, sometime before, in the previous slide, he was talking about the designing, onboarding, and distribution of the packages. Um, well, ONAP does more to it that it also helps in the day zero, day one, day two configuration. It also helps in the closed loop or control loop, as we call it, uh, which takes care of the uh, post instantiation, checks, which is the monitoring part. Uh, the, uh, I mean, the, the proactive and reactive measures which are to be taken for any case which is to be handled after that. So overall, ONAP will be playing the key role as an orchestrator, as a, a design uh, uh, and distribution of the packages for the design distribution of packages, and also used for service assurance, which is uh, basically the monitoring system uh, along with the policy uh, driven and uh, uh, the clamp driven, I would say, uh, the closed loop automation driven system, which will be securing us the complete end to end uh, uh, functionality of this to be intact. Over to, back to you, Rani. Thank you, Seshu. And with that, it's time to introduce our panel members. So uh, we have Catherine Lefebvre, who is the Own Up Technical Steering Committee Chair, and she's also AVP of Cloud and SDN Platform Integration at ATT. We have Byungu Jun, who is the ONAP Architecture Subcommittee Vice Chair and a longtime contributor, and he's a principal engineer at Ericsson. We have Seshu Kumar Mudiganti, who is an, the ONAP uh, Service Orchestrator or SOPTL, also a Technical Steering Committee member and a lead architect at Huawei. Uh, Lukas Rachevsky, who is the uh, longtime ONAP contributor, committer in several projects, and he's an R&D expert at Orange. And finally, myself, Rani Haibi, I'm an ONAP TSC member and the director of open source software at Samsung Research America. The first questions that we usually hear uh, about this uh, ONAP support for cloud native networks is how to get involved in this activity, how to know what's going on, how to take part either as a user or a contributor. So there are several ways, as you can see here in this slide. Uh, I would like to remind you that you're all welcome to collaborate on the ONAP Cloud Native journey. We welcome any type of participation. Uh, you can help us prioritize features. You can bring in new feature requirements. You can participate in designing and evolving ONAP's architecture. You may share your experience with us. That's always welcome so we can learn from it. Uh, you can contribute anything that could be documentation, design, and of course, uh, code if you're interested. Um, so how does it work? Uh, 
Uh, you, we have a task force that meets weekly every Thursday, uh, as you can see here on the screen. Uh, we document our work on the ONAP wiki, so there's a lot of good information there, and there is a link here as well. Uh, we have a mailing list that you may use to ask questions or make suggestions. Uh, please remember, all discussions are open. Uh, we welcome you to join. Uh, don't be afraid. You don't have to be uh, actively contributing. You can start by just uh, listening in to the conversation and following it. And then later, when you feel it's the right time, start being more active in contributing. But again, bottom line, as I said, this is an open discussion and we truly welcome the opinion of the end users. Uh, so please uh, join us uh, to this uh, ongoing work. Uh, another question that we get frequently is uh, what is the value add of ONAP for CNF orchestration? Uh, what does it provide on top of Kubernetes, for example? So Catherine, can you maybe say a few words about that? So sure, Rani. So what the telco world, as you know, is known to have requirements to support network services whose components are spread across multiple computing cloud and regions. Therefore, having a centralized uh, orchestrator, like uh, suggested by Seishu previously, that will handle various network function in these multiple cloud environments is required. The first added value brought by ONAP is that the platform knows network service capabilities through the modeling. The deployment and the life cycle management of network function are more complex than the application themselves. There is a need of supporting multiple interfaces or provi provider networks or service function chaining. Again, ONAP is offering solutions to solve the complexity of network function deployment and lifecycle management. ONAP supports cloud massive transformation, hybrid deployment with physical, virtualized and containerized network function. That's also another asset. And we can also think that uh, there is a need for showing the comprehensive status of the, at the application level instead of each resource level. Uh, resource level. So ONAP can monitor the service distributed application and can also run through various analytics engine and even act on actionable insights. So the, pro the platform provides monitoring, analytics, observability capabilities of distributed application and control loop mechanism. That's also a great asset offered by ONAP. And finally, uh, ONAP enable uniform and platform level service mesh security pattern by levering some CNCF projects. So that's my feedback to you, Rani, about what type of adding value the ONAP platform can bring. Thank you, Catherine. Sounds like there's a lot to do and Kubernetes, Kubernetes itself is not enough. So thank you for educating us about this. Um, so there is, as I mentioned, a lot of things are going on and there's a lot of functionality, but um, maybe it's uh, useful to kind of understand what features were delivered with ONAP Honolulu release and what can we expect from the Istanbul release expected later this year, what is, and also what is planned for the future. So Lukash, maybe you can start. Uh, thank you, Rani. <clears throat> so the recent uh, releases, uh, uh, there was developed a lot of very useful features for the uh, CNF orchestration. So starting, uh, in fact, from the capability for the onboarding of the native Helm uh, packages compliant with the version 3.5 of the uh, Helm uh, standard. We can, uh, with ONAP, uh, deploy such uh, packages uh, to the uh, dedicated Kubernetes uh, clusters. And ONAP uh, participates uh, heavily in the process of the uh, preparation of the inputs uh, for the instantiation process. Uh, moreover, uh, ONAP is very important role uh, in the, the process of the uh, post uh, configuration just after the deployment of the Helm packages. Moreover, uh, with ONAP, uh, lately we can uh, perform uh, the health check operation for the CNF, checking whether the deployed CNF is up and running and is ready for handling the traffic or other things. 
We have also possibility for the synchronization of the configuration between the CNF, DNF, uh, and other network uh, functions. Moreover, we are able to track the status of the resources deployed on the Kubernetes and to fetch this information for the configuration purpose or any other kinds. And we can also create our custom uh, workflows uh, in which we can provide any customized logic uh, that will integrate the CNF with our uh, environment or uh, other things. Thank you. And Seshu, maybe a little bit about uh, where ONAP is going with, in that respect? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's a pretty big question, Rani. Uh, I'll try to uh, brief it as much as possible because um, uh, one thing is for sure, CNF is a pretty big journey. We just are uh, scratching the tip of the iceberg with respect to what we have to do there. I think Ukash has given us a very good uh, insights on uh, what we have done so far. Uh, that is actually the basis of uh, what we will do in future. So one of the major things which we are trying to do right now is to integrate ourselves with uh, standard organizations like the ETSI 3GPP uh, to ensure that we don't have any, um, you know, uh, we don't get into a, a, a situation which is non-standard based. Uh, we are working closely with uh, uh, the ETSS standard, which is also working in parallel, uh, in, in, I would say in parallel right, right now to us to actually get, uh, bring us some standards with respect to SOL 18, also on SOL 7, SOL 4, with respect to the VNFD, NSD, and security. Uh, that will be our, our uh, one of the major challenges, one of the major works to do, and to make sure that we integrate with them. The other major contribution would be to towards uh, uh, the integration to Kubernetes-based metrics, as I was talking in the previous uh, uh, slide about the closed-loop or control-loop operations, wherein uh, uh, right now one of the biggest challenges we have is to actually have the control loop for the CNFs. Uh, which is a must-have task or must-have uh, uh, feature for a production-grade system. Uh, so surely we'll be working on that with integration of Prometheus, uh, which is actually happening on DCA. This will surely be a, uh, setting a stage. The other things which we are also looking into is to see how we can uh, leverage the existing systems without modifying the flows and to ensure that the current orchestration flows themselves can actually take care of all the three resources by three, I mean the, the VNFs, the PNFs, and the CNFs. And to ensure that we will actually have a complete service com comprising of all these three or any of these three or you know a combination of these three to be orchestrated seamlessly in one app without having any fuss. <laughs> uh, so this same platform is what we want to enhance further for different scenarios. Uh, the scenarios also include uh, certain uh, uh, things which we are looking at right now because the, the basis of this is the use case to validate. Uh, again, I want to stress on the point that ONAP is not a product, it's a platform, but we use use case to validate the, the flows. And uh, we are currently looking at uh, 5G based, as I said, 5G Blueprint is one of the co uh, key features which we'll be looking into to, or to orchestrate and demonstrate the complete functionality. Also, we are uh, uh, looking forward for any sort of, um, um, uh, I mean, collaborations with any partners here who would be happy to join us. and. Uh, provide us some uh, CNFs which can be used or to demonstrate certain features. Uh, Rani, again, this is a part of what you said. Uh, I'll be just adding to what Rani just said, how to join us. One of the key contributions which are, we, we are looking out forward is to actually have some uh, 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 collaborative work with respect to new features. Uh, we have been doing uh, certain features of it, but that's not enough. We want more and more scenarios to be joining us to us. Like we want operators to come up with the scenarios which are uh, right now their big problem. We will try to find a solution together. With having said that, uh, I'll uh, get it over to you back, Rani. Yeah, thanks, Ashu. A lot of exciting stuff going on and a lot of work still needs to be done. And it's going to be interesting for sure. Um, one of the questions we often get is um, about the CNF packaging or how to prepare the CNFs for orchestration by ONAP. So uh, Bjorn, can you help us understand what is the format of CNF packaging supported by ONAP? Is it Helm-based? Does it follow HC NFV specifications? And what is that ASD you just mentioned? Sure. Open support, ONAP supports uh, ONAP proprietary CISA package with the ONAP internal uh, CNF models and Helm chart. We need, we need, we're using Helm chart. And second, SC004 based CNF packaging, including again Helm chart and with the SC001 CNFD or coming ASD, application service descriptor. 
application service descriptor is being developed as a new CNF modeling specification, and it uses SC Solar 004 based packages. Once AST model and package are settled on a proprietary CNF CISA package could be replaced with the AST packages. That's the current plan for uh, format what ONEP supports. Back to you, Ronnie. Thank you, Byung, for uh, putting everything in place for us. Um, another question that uh, comes to mind is, as we know, ONEP is not the only open source or uh, network initiative out there. Uh, there are different open source projects and also standard development organizations that are working on this transition to cloud native networks. So, Sesho, can you uh, say a few words about how ONAP fits into the bigger picture that includes other open source projects and SDOs? That's a wonderful question, Rani, because um, I think it will be part of it will be part two of what I just said before uh, the future plan. Um, as I said, uh, uh, we are already uh, working with ETSI. Byung also said that ASD is one format of it, which we are together working on uh, to have the packaging and the model structure. Um, the proprietary package, as he said, is something which came from the open e comp uh, time uh, in 2017. And then we have been evolving of it to integrate ourselves with multiple standards. ETSI is one of them. TMF is also one more them to have the integration with respect to the uh, inbound, uh, I mean, legato presto sort of feature functionalities, the orchestration layer. The other things which we are working also are on the standards from 3GPP, from E2E slicing. Uh, the end-to-end -end slicing is one of the key features which is happening uh, in the own app. We are, evolve we are working on it since Frankfurt release, the release five, um, and uh, sorry, release six, in fact, uh, release six onwards, uh, we have been working on it and we have been evolving it uh, right from core, the transport and the RAM. Um, these all things are right now VNF based. The core is actually what we have transformed to a uh, to a CNF. That is also going to happen to the GPP standard integration. Coming back to the uh, point of uh, open sources, uh, we are actually working with respect to Anuket. Uh, Anuket is the one which is actually going to help us in the validation and certification part of it. The other project uh, uh, which we will be closely working on is XGVela. XGVela is the Teleco Pass uh, uh, platform, which is uh, actually a layer above the General Pass. Uh, so that is going to be a good uh, integration point for us uh, for actually having uh, the complete general pass. Right now it's a black box for us. The, the cluster is not managed by uh, ONAP. So we will actually have uh, that black box transform into gray and then slowly to white uh, in, in the future. We are expecting that to happen with XGVL integration. Uh, also the integration with MCO, uh, a new project which is uh, right now in um, um, incubation in the LFN is something which we are also looking forward to. Uh, so this is a nutshell, I can say we have the integration points both from the uh, SDOs, uh, when I'm saying SDO, I'm talking about the standard organizations like the um, TMF, ETSI, uh, the 3GPP, uh, and so on and so forth, uh, all of them which are actually working on CNFs. On the open source projects, we are also integrating ourselves with uh, XGVela. We have plans to integrate with XGVela and COI is in, in, in some way in future plan in our roadmap. Uh, also, we have the, the 5G blueprint is going to give us a big feature uh, where, uh, I mean, it's a, as we have seen in the previous slide, it's a huge horizon where we have multiple projects, including Magma from Facebook. Um, also, that is something which we are also looking at. Also, OKD is one, um, I think, OpenShift uh, Kubernetes distribution. Uh, that is a very big uh, um, integration point which we are looking forward to because that's going to pro provide us a lot of traction for us to manage our own clusters, which is not the case right now. So as I'm talking, I'm thinking more. So I think this is never ending, but uh, yeah, this is the, uh, I can say this is what is a short of what and all are the possible integrations for us and what we have in future as a part of the roadmap. We are finding license offices for all these integration points. That's one key point which we have to consider. Um, we also want uh, the experts of these specific projects to come and join us because uh, we want license officers to can actually help us to have these collaborations to be more successful. Uh, that will be a surely a success uh, in, in the win-win situation for both the projects. Thank you. Thank you, Seshu. Uh, so with that, uh, I think we can pause here and maybe take a few questions from our audience. Please feel free to ask anything that comes to mind. <laughs> 